number one, which are basically already over. So I've got to jump into all of my uh, graphics here because I uh, <laughs> wasn't aware that they were going to be jumping straight into the picks and bands. Let's get this all fixed up, figured out. We've got ourselves game number one of the spring split spring uh, <laughs> open tournament we're just calling it the spring tournament this is going to be why are you running on the blue side versus 13 noobs academy on the red side yes there's going to be actual gameplay here don't you worry we were just having a little bit of a pre-show fun and you're uh, still red by the way uh, yes i'm well it's the actual i tried to get a green screen if you can see that i'm a little bit of a green screen going on behind me but the red might be because of the wrapping as well i'm gonna make sure that we get you on screen as well because you're not either way why don't we run through the players and their champions real quickly and then we'll get into this game here and introduce everyone to the tournament if you would go through why are you running on the left side while i get these things figured out all right so for team why are you running we've got twtv regen pride on urga in the top lane nuez on sejuani in the jungle J Daddy Me Lane on Oriana in the mid lane, TWTV Justify on Jinx in the bottom lane ADC role, and Dr. Monocle rounding it out with Twitch in the bottom lane supportive role. Fantastic. And for 13 Noobs Academy, a new team in the tournament. It wasn't in the spring tournament. We've got ourselves Squashy taking the poppy in the top lane. Kapatai with a Lee Sin in the jungle. Exiled V Shaman with a Morgana in the mid lane. Nova, Tabula, Rasa on the Kogma AD carry. And Huba Huba with a Lulu in support. Before we get into analyzing this team comp very quickly, I want to welcome everyone to Excellency Shoutcasting Spring Tournament. So, this is a tournament that we're running about every three months. We had the winter tournament in December. This is going to be our spring tournament. Well, like the plan is to have a summer tournament coming up in the following three months as well. A lot of these teams have been scrimming on our Tuesday nights, team scrim nights that we cast here on Excellency. There's some really good stuff. But for these teams in particular, while the side of why are you running has a couple of players that we're very familiar with. Nuez played in the last tournament. Nuez plays a lot on the stream. The side of 13 Noobs Academy, brand Brand new, fresh, and there's a huge difference in these two when it came to seeding. It was actually during the group seeding stage that took place Thursday and Friday this week. Why are you running? walked away with a 3-0 lead when it came to the group's seeding. So they are max top seed when it comes to the tournament for the side of 13 noobs. They couldn't even play because they had players missing, so they went 0-3. But that doesn't mean they don't have the skill because they didn't show up means that they could still have a fantastic run and we get to cast this game let's talk about these picks what do you think Rafe? so for picks mm, i all i'm always partial to the jinx composition um just because she's incredibly powerful at the moment however i have to say lulu kogma has always been one of the top three or four combinations in bot lane kogma is a champion insane damage late game and really his two item power spikes nothing to shake a stick at either but the thing is is kogma is basically has the defensive capabilities of a peeled orange seriously he can't actually do anything he has a 30 percent slow which goes up to i think 70 percent when you max it at level 11. Other than that, any he doesn't have any ability to get away or he basically tries to kill you before he, you kill him. And considering his very low health pool, he's going to have problems doing that as well. So there's a lot of positioning that goes into that champion. Um, but Lulu basically shores up all of his problems as well as giving him a huge amount of extra damage through health picks as well as a knockup and either more attack speed or can whimsy somebody who's jumped onto him if you haven't ever been tilted before just play against lulu and get turned into a squirrel while you're trying to dodge dive the back line that will tilt you i promise it doesn't matter how level-headed you are it's so annoying but so Lulu and Kogma should have the advantage in the bottom lane to start with. Um, if Kogma is experienced on the champion, I don't know if Nova Tabula Raza, if this is a main for him or not. 
but if he's co comfortable on it, they should have a heavy advantage get over the Kench and the Jinx, being double range versus range melee, as well as the fact that Kog'Maw can trade pretty much at will whenever W is up. Bio Arcane Barrage uh, at level 6 going to be helping him out as well. Um, but that, the help pick shield will definitely give him the advantage in the 2v2. Meanwhile, Morgana in the mid lane, a little bit curious. This is what you would... I think this is what you call a Juggermaw comp. The black shield, drop it on the Kog'Maw, and you have just this unstoppable engine of death. Uh, all like Morgana's win rate still pretty good at the moment, but playing her mid lane is, is a little bit of a question mark. It's not something you see very often. She doesn't have a ton of pressure in the mid lane if uh, her opponent is capable of dodging the dark binding. She does have a good amount of sustain through her passive, but against an Orianna, I have to give that laning advantage over to Ori uh, pretty heavily. The poke is just going to be much more impressive from Oriana, plus the late game impact as well from that uh, that ultimate shockwave. Um, meanwhile, jungle matchup. Uh, Lee Sin has the advantage in the ganks and probably the fighting early um, over Sejuani. So long, like Sejuani can cancel his Q if she if she has her Arctic Assault up. So at that point, it becomes kind of a wash um, in CC wise. But if Lee Sin can time his spells pretty well, he should be able to win those fights pretty handedly. Um, but Sejuani becomes more useful late game, and we have Urgot once again because it like. He's been good for like a year and a half, and then they nerfed him into the turf. They're like, and then they buffed okay. him. Okay. <laughs> and then they're like, well, he's bad now, so let's make him not bad. And then they're like, oh, wait, that's why we made him bad, because he's an absolute terror to play against. Uh, Urgot has the advantage over Poppy pretty much all points up until I'd say about level 12. Then it be once Poppy gets a bunch of items under her belt, She's going to be pretty difficult to deal with. She's one of those really hefty tanks. Um, and the outplay potential is there using her uh, her wall slam. Oh, this is a curious little misdirection. It's almost uh, like a Earth start. If you talk about Earth meta when it comes to uh, weird metas, I've found that in Earth games, there usually is a big 5v5 party in the top lane, but... Uh, even though all four went top, seeing if maybe there was a early invade from the side of why are you running, usually one player tries to get into that tri brush drop ward. Uh, didn't catch anyone out, so they very quickly recall and switch to the different lanes. Thank you, Wraith, for covering while I I recovered for, from uh, from the wrapping that I was doing. But either way, want to welcome everyone to game number one, why are you running, taking on 13 Noobs Academy. This is the quarter five. Finals. This is the very beginning of the tournament. However, we're only going to be casting one game in the quarterfinals. So what you see here, the team that wins this moves on to the semifinal. So there will be, after this game, three other teams that also do not make it to the quarter, uh, the semifinals. So this is big for these teams because they're best of ones. Everything is on the line. Let's get into this game. As you've broken it down, you're talking about the late game advantage that the side of Why Are You Running has when it comes to Orianna and the Jinx. The team fighting power is really big, but it's the Kog'Maw, and then you were just saying the tank of the Poppy for the side of 13 Noobs Academy. That, yeah. that Poppy is just going to be the front line. And the thing I'm seeing here is there's a lot of disengage from 13 Noobs Academy. The Morgana, the Poppy, both can basically nullify a fight and say, hold on, we're not ready for this fight. Let's reset, let's wait a minute until we are in position or we do have the right items to then actually engage in a fight. And this Lulu Kog'Maw looking already pretty hot in the bottom lane, dropping Dr. Two. Monocle down to about half. Yeah, the level two coming through, always the strongest point in the game for the, any given champion. Where, or the power gulf between you and your opponent, unless you get massive kill leads over your opponent, then that's going to be your strongest difference because you have a large amount of health, um, about 100 health difference between you and your opponent, plus the power of a whole nother ability and the more stats from the level one. So that is, was 
exercised fairly well, and I believe a pot did in. Yeah, burned one of the Tom Kench's pots in the bottom side. Those, those are going to be very important as the game moves on because the poke's just going to keep coming out. And yeah, Tapio Larraza really making use of his extended range on his W to lay down the harass underneath the tower. That's what right. I'm wanting to see. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Morgana was having a pretty tough time versus the uh, the Oriana having to burn a pot herself. Not terribly surprising, considering I mean Morgana's been relegated to support for a really long time and for kind of good reason. So nothing too crazy, a lot of farming, but if you think about the way these teams want to play, they're really going to be farming heavy until they hit that level 6. That's when things what are going to start to get a little bit crazy. The Orianna coming online with her Shockwave ultimate. Oh. Urga going to be able to kill people with his ultimate if they get low enough. The question is, will we see any early game roams from, say, these mid laners or top laners as we've got double TP for the side of 13 Noobs Academy on the Morgana and the Poppy to the one TP from Region Pride on that Urgot? Yeah, I was confused as to why Urgot went back. There were even CS. I didn't see any fighting go down up there. But Urgot recalled, knowing that Poppy can't threaten him, and he bought a cult as soon mm. as he could. Just recalled and bought a cull, so that's actually really clever. He's just going to harass the Poppy, but he's invested toward that late game, not trying to smash her necessarily, but that's basically a free kill if he's not punished for it, which, I mean, Poppy doesn't really have any good way of punishing a uh, an Urgot. So Justified just down to about half health in that bottom lane. Still has a pot to heal up if need be, especially if one of these junglers tries to come and make a play in the bottom lane. But with that heavy, heavy shove from 13 Noobs Academy, they're looking for this first plate and trying to just cause Why Are You Running's bottom lane to back up as Lulu takes a turret shot. And the whole on Kog'Maw going to get zapped up as well, sped up with a Lulu, so he should be all right. I'm really curious to see these junglers. Do they try to make an impact in these lanes pre-6, which both can. They're decent at that pre-6 gank. But really, it's that 6 that you want to have. That's the 6 that you might be grinding for right now. Lee Sin going to have that Dragon Rage kick. The Glacial Prison from the Sejuani as well to lock people down. So, so far, as it's level 5 and Lee Sin to the level 4 of the Sejuani, it looks like they're just trying to hit that level 6 to then come to a lane and make some plays. Yeah, the thing is, is that I want to see Lee Sin so active because his his greatest strength in this particular game is going to be pre-6 because Sejuani, like you said, is not as strong of a ganker pre-6. She kind of needs that ultimate to make a really effective gank. Um, Arctic Assault, uh, granted, if you, if you have an overextended opponent, something like that, anybody can make a good gank. But Sejuani becomes massively more effective once she has that long-range initiation. Um, that she can just toss out with the skill shot. However, Lee Sin, I mean, all he needs is Q and his slow and a little assistance from a laner, and he just has so much damage that he can he can take down an opponent in level as early as level two, but probably needs level three to make it really stick. But he's kind of wasted that advantage. He's about to hit six, and that means Sejuani's <laughs> hitting six. Hmm. Bobby trying to make a little play on the Urgot in that top lane. Misses him. He's able to recall safely in time as Morgana in the mid lane. Exile taking a little bit of damage. But thing to note, Infernal Drake to start the game off. That's everyone's favorite Drake. So expect there might be some partying there. I'm amazed, though, that neither team has even dropped any solid vision around it. You see that one controlled ward from the side of 13 Noobs Academy towards that bottom lane brush but that's not really covering the area and so obviously both teams while they would enjoy the infernal not prioritizing it right now as Sejuani is maybe coming around from behind the Morgana it seems she can make a play it is a level 7 Morgana so she will have that ultimate available she has black shield though yeah she's got black shield oh, oh, there's a shockwave straight to that ultimate Woo! you can't do nothing if you're CC'd and a great play gives Nuez first blood for why are you running that was clean so the shockwave you wouldn't even expect that because she was just she was a little overextended right there, not respecting the fact that there could be the shockwave coming through, but just steps on the ball, and that's it. That's all she wrote. Hold on. It's a little bit of a sneak here. Kappa Tai takes away the Infernal Drake, despite the fact that their mid laner is down right now. They saw the enemy 
jungler and he drops a control ward and he's like, I can take this. And they end up being rewarded with that early game Infernal break. Yeah, he jumped on that Infernal as soon as Sejuani was coming into that mid lane. He says, I know that I can kind of be safe doing this as well as he had that control ward down, which again, with no vision from RU running on that Infernal, it was a pretty easy take. So I would say worth it when you're kind of investing towards that late game Definitely. and taking away the Infernal from a late game Urgot or a late game Jinx or a late game Orianna is absolutely worth it on top of your own Kog'Ma. There's like so yeah. many ways that, you know what, sacrifice the mid laner, we're going to get Infernal and we're gonna enjoy that when it comes to the 25 minute mark of the game yeah and the thing is is that it's doubly effective on the cog mob because cog benefits from both AP and AD damage so he's getting 10% bonuses on both so that's a pretty big deal for him Nuez oh. going yeah going to grab the scuttle crab and force out the ultimate from Capitai Hmm. Yeah, Lee Sin just not interested in fighting it. He knew that Orianna was around the corner, dueling with uh, Exiled V Shaman a little bit in the mid lane, and says, you know what, I don't know if Orianna is going to have her ultimate up in a moment, so I'm just going to back away. As it turned out, it was just coming off of cooldown, so if that had been an extended fight, that might have been a deadly sin, as Regen probably going to lose about half health in that top lane, consistently shoved underneath the turret, but he's still farming well. He's keeping right on time with this Poppy, and that's what he needs to do. Not try to get any crazy kills, but instead just keep that farm rolling in that top lane yeah but i want to see him harass a little bit more that hold on we've got the tom kench tp into the bottom lane jinx gonna be in trouble if they bother sejuani she's gonna go ahead and sun up the cog ball but he's been hit by the wild rope not gonna be enough regen pride coming in as well squashy is here she's gonna knock away one that's a tom kench the character you don't really care about is hubba oh. hubba gonna be dying to the sejuani off to the side she flashes we'll see if she's still, still alive after the end of the fight as squashy it's has been hit with the ultimate from the ur god doesn't even need it he's gonna go down it's a party as exile gonna come to the bottom lane trying to get a little more damage flashes away daddy me link is that's here high. trying to get the last little bit of damage nice root onto sejuani so no more chase for the moment. These, um, in the meantime, Oriana is still trying to chase that down. Lee Sin takes down the Tom Kench. Exiled wants to get oh, the Blast Cone. Blast a little cone. bit of a shield. Can she hit the Blast Cone to get over the wall? She's got that Dark Binding onto Jay Daddy. Lee Sin's going to go in. He's hit with the Shock Wave. However, he can absorb it. Is he still full health? Nuez really wants this more goddess. She's a sliver oh. of health. Dark Binding's going to land. Lee Sin could Q, try Q, to Q. chase in. Is the Q off of cooldown? He's going to miss the Shock Wave. So no follow-up there. And Nuis is actually going to start up the red buff, but he's at 200 health. That's... And he had, they do have vision on this. Lee Sin's going to go in. He's got the kill on Sejuani. And now he can chase it on the aura right. as well. Hold on. Jay Daddy's got a lot of damage. And those auto attacks really, really hurt. The flash force out by the Lee Sin. Red buff picked uh. up by Orianna. So she's going to join that for the mid lane. Lee Sin's still sticking around for a moment. But crazy play ends up three kills to three. But you got to look at where those kills went. It's on both junglers. Two kills for the Lee Sin, two kills for the Sejuani, and one for each top laner. No ADC got any kills. But that thing is that Kapatai could have taken that fight. Not a heads up play right there. He had the smite and he had the ability to take down the red buff, giving him the regen, the extra slow, and the extra damage he would need to win that fight. Oriana had already used her ultimate, had already committed so much of her damage. And once she threw out that last burst, she wouldn't have been able to kill Lee Sin. And getting that extra health from smiting down Red Buff would have got, given him enough to win that fight. Unfortunately, doesn't end up throwing the fight in his favor. But those extra uh, extra kills do put him in a very strong position to continue pressuring out the map. Um, Nuez just taking down a control ward. A little bit of oh. stun and buckler damage from Squashy on that top well. lane. Tom Kench going to come down once again to the bottom lane. They've got the stun <laughs> of the Kog'Ma. He flashes away, though, as he didn't flash last fight. He just got hit with Wild Growth and then went down. So his flash is burned. That's going to be Tom Kench ultimately coming down. However, why are you running? You're doing a fantastic job of staying aggressive with this Tom Kench. And now they're going to rotate, get a little bit of vision around the Ocean Drake, which will be coming up in about 30 seconds. I have to say I'm curious that... Uh... Uh, Tabula Raza actually did flash there. He didn't need to. Lulu still had access to a lot of her spells. Um, wow, this is a <laughs> very aggressive, but goes in Squashy's favor as he does pick up the Buckler Shield. Uh, managed to take two tower shots without much of an impact. Um, even trade in the mid lane between the Morgana and the Orianna. Tabula Raza running forward, and Dr. Monocle's gonna take a pretty heavy chunk. Yeah, right about at half health, but since the gray health will be ticking back down, that ends up putting it at about a third health. 
Yeah, that's one of the nice things about Tom Kench is if you don't pop the gray health, you can heal back a pretty decent amount, especially once you get those five stacks into it, you'll get probably about three quarters of what goes gray back. However, late game, it'll also be nice to deal with any bursts potentially coming out from that Lee Sin as a, maybe a fight is new. It's going to hop over the wall with the Blast Cone. It's a 2v2 at the moment. Shockwave oh. to avoid the Lee Sin damage. He's going to finish taking the Resonating Strike. So he's going to do that. Oh, between the goalposts goes the Poppy Ultimate. But they're still going to disengage anyway. They say, you know what? We lost one. Let's not fight with lower numbers. Morgana's pushing that mid lane. Yep. Meanwhile, Justify is going to knock down a turret plate and possibly get a second one, but the Polymorph's going to come through. She's going to greed for it, but Tabula Raza is here. They do have the Devour to, to prevent any further aggression, though. So Tabula Raza, oh, going forward, he has access to the, hold on, he's got the Q coming through. Living and Artillery, the Justify God. tries to sidestep the second, gets pecked off. Great pickup by Kog'Maw, go ahead. Yeah, Kogma, knowing his power spike right there, as soon as he hits the Gitsu's Rage Blade, the double taps on his passive for Bio Arcane Barrage. I think that is at this level, let's check the stats. Yeah, 6%. So hitting for 12% of the target's maximum health every two auto attacks. Jinx not anticipating the amount of damage that was going to come through from her opponent. And pays the price, tries to greet out for another tower plate, and ends up paying with her life. So overall, five kills to three, a nice lead from 13 Noobs Academy at this point. Keep in mind, though, they've got the rest of this game and the full bracket to try to keep going through, and there's lots of teams to play against. And that top lane, they're going to try to find the Urgot. He's got no help. He's so squishy in the early game, and we're only at the 15-minute mark. Popped and dropped. Oh, now the Sejuani going to be rooted up, hit with that Dark Binding. New as oh. a little bit of help. Flashes the wall, but the Flash release Lee Sin, as well as the Poppy. It's the Poppy that flashed. Lee Sin just jumped over the wall with a nice sonic wave they're going to turn onto the rift herald should be able to secure this as no one is around the oriana saying it's not worth trying to fight into three yep and as you said rift herald gonna fall unfortunately they weren't able to get this before the 14 minute mark where it could be put to maximum use knocking down tower plates but probably will still be used to your first tower gold um, or at least deal a substantial chunk of damage. But at the current HP levels of most of these towers, well, Poppy might be able to just get it all on her own right here, and it does look like that's going to fall in her favor. Solo first tower gold going to Squashy, and that's going to be pretty impressive from the Poppy. The amount of tankiness she's going to get. Kapitai coming into the mid lane and going to force the flash out of the Oriana. Just the respect flash right there. Had she gotten hit with the Sonic Way, there's the potential of the flash kick into Root, which would be instant death because Lee Sin's 4 0 and dealing crazy damage. Has the Warrior Enchant finished completely as well on the way to a Black Cleaver. On top of a 400 gold bounty, so that's something to keep everybody's eyes on for why are you running, saying, you know what, he is a high priority target to kill, but you also can't ignore Nova on this Cog mob because if the game scales later, he's going to be hitting harder. He's already got that Rage Blade as well. Zap going to land onto Huba Huba on the Lulu, trying to escape the Tongue Lash as well. Lee Sin kicking into three members, Woo! drops the Oriana before the Shockwave can connect. Now Kappa in trouble. Steel dashes to the Cog Maw. He's going to get stunned up, probably dropped himself. He's at a sliver of avoids the rocket in the meantime the jinx is gone lose able to pick that up tom catch coming in eats up the cog mob but he is going to go down himself goes golden trying to survive as long as possible still falls and our god is going to drop as well make that a four four zero as 13 noobs academy wipe the floor with why are you running wow that was a crazy fight right there Nova untouched in the back line. The only one running toward him was the support, and I'm sorry, that's not enough pressure onto the Kogma with one and a half items completed. That's going to be mid lane turret going down, second tier going down, as well as the bottom lane tier one. That's three towers plus the fight. Four for zero. That's going to cement a substantial lead for 13 Noobs Gaming. And in one moment, 6,000 gold lead for 13 noobs, and they are looking pretty. They can go ahead and reset, buy their new items, make it a nice two to, I don't know, two and a half items for most of the team. 
and then we get into position for the next Drake, which will be coming up, as well as get some vision around the Baron. Let's check in on the Drake. It's going to be a second Infernal Drake, and what a joy for 13 news that are already up. One Infernal. Yep, and the the Infernal gets increasingly more powerful the further in the lead you are. So that extra 10% damage, which is going to be impressively powerful on Lee Sin, who is currently 5-0, as well as the Kog'Maw. We've already discussed how much that's going to be doing on this 2-in-1 Kog'Maw that is benefiting from both stats of the Infernal Drake. So it's effectively giving him 20% effective damage rather than just the 10% that most of the champions are getting. Now, that's nothing to shake a stick at, considering Kapatai is basically one-shotting the enemy mid laner right now. All right, so game state this point heavily in 13 Noobs Academy's favor as Regen Pry gonna get a nice chunk of his health knocked off by that Poppy, who's already got two full tank edits completed. The call is done for Regen Pry, but he hasn't cashed in just yet. Maybe waiting for the right item before trying to secure that with that extra gold. The question is, where can Why Are You Running go? They're gonna try to make a play on the top lane, and Poppy says, nope, get out of my lane. Oh, that was wonderful. Tom Kench is like, I'm ganking you. And Poppy's like, uh-uh, no, you're not. <laughs> Try Bye. again once you got your ult back up. All right, that allows, with three members towards that top side, four, 13 noobs to rotate towards this strike on the bottom side, which you already talked about, is their advantage. Again, it's really interesting that Kog'Ma would try to go, or sorry, Tom Kench would try to go towards that top side when there's this Infernal popping up in three seconds. They're going to take the Blast Cone over the wall. Lee Sin doesn't even need the Blast Cone because he can just hop with the Sonic Wave. And there they go, starting to up it's Lulu, down here. buffing this Kog'Ma up massively. They grab the Infernal. And really, not much that what are you doing can do to try to stop this. Yeah, and that is going to be a mountain tank coming up, so there's not going to be anything in the foreseeable future to equalize this Drake lead that they have. That's going to be a very, very strong damage lead. 17% bonus damage on a team that pretty much everybody except Lulu likes damage. Even, even Poppy really does pretty well with a little bit of extra damage under her belt if you've never played the uh hold on well justify oh. force to flash it still almost goes down to just the combo from lee sin kafatai not even landing an auto attack there but forcing out that critical summer spell from from the adc of blue side right now and that's going to be an incredible disadvantage. They can't play nearly as far forward with their ADC crippled like that because Kapatai can just jump right in there and do that combo once again, and there will be no recourse next time. And that's the crazy thing. Now, it was amazing that Justify was able to flash and actually live, didn't even burn the heal, but even still, one of those very, very risky times. If you lose the ADC, you could lose a Baron. They could just go straight for the Baron, which would lead things even greater for 13 Noobs Academy. Why are you running? They have the Jinx alive. The Flash is down, but they did secure some vision around the Baron. So they're going to try to keep clearing these waves, push these things back out. The main thing I'm seeing from them, though, is they want to scale. They want to keep farming. They want to get this Urgot to three items, as much farm as possible on him and the Jinx, and then try for a 5v4 with somebody maybe splitting on the side lanes, catch somebody out, win when it comes to the more man in the team fight. Uh, as, hold on, they might catch Lee Sin. Okay. I wonder if they were going to yeah. just walk straight into that brush, face check the brush with Lee Sin sitting there. Yeah, I was wondering, I'm wondering if scaling is even a good idea because nobody outscales Kog'Maw. Um, just the amount of percentage health damage that that champion brings to the table. Uh, Justify might get himself pinned against the wall. He is going to get stunned up, dropped to about half. Tom Kench decides to actually go ahead and Capitan. devour the Jinx. And now with 13 noobs seeing there's two members in that bottom lane, they say, let's go onto the Baron with all four other members. Super Mega Death Rocket coming flying in, so they get vision on the Baron. It's down to about half, and 13 noobs pull off from it. Yeah, they Nuez unaccounted for. They didn't have vision on the backside of the pit. Wise to pull off. They have such a strong lead right now. There's no reason to throw it away with a Baron throw right now. 
And Squashy is in such a powerful position that really he can 2v1 their bottom lane if he wants to. Jinx does not have the items necessary to contend with this Poppy. And Tom Kench forced to use the Devourer to keep his ADC from dying to the opposing tank. Which lets you know how much fun Poppy is to play against if you're an ADC. 6,000 gold lead, still holding steady, but not growing for 13 noobs. They haven't actually been able to get many other neutral objectives. That top lane turret still full house. Bottom lane is dropped low by Poppy, but not taken out just yet as Regen Pride going to check in with Poppy, get his health dropped to about half nothing's new. Now he has to run away. Nice little flip from Poppy, or from him flipping Poppy out of the turret range. That means, though, it's time to go back onto the Baron. 13 noobs are going to go ahead and actually TP the Poppy in. Maybe make it a 5v4 fight as the Urgot is still in that bottom lane. Yeah, but they're not focusing down the Baron. They've already committed the TP. And I don't... Okay, now they're trying to clear out the vision. They didn't realize they had been spotted out. And hold on. They're squashy trying to catch out the Oriana. They've knocked him up. But a nice ultimate locks out Nova. However, they're still going to be going forward. Finish the Shockwave wave. on a three members. Is it going to be enough? They've been able to catch out Nova. Cogma the Kogma is done. Poppy is gone as well. No, wait, hold on. Kogma is still alive. He's had the wild growth put on him. It was the Poppy that went down the front line. But that's what she's for, is to keep that Kogma ADC alive. Dr. Monocle on the run. Nice Shockwave. Or, sorry. Uh... Resonating strike from the Lee Sin to chase in onto Tom Kench. Besides not going any further, will they now go they're onto gonna, the Baron? Yeah, they're going to go right onto the Baron. They had taken down the opposing jungler in that fight, and that's all they needed to make this Baron a sure thing. Capitai still has access to Smite, didn't use it in the last fight, and this Baron is falling fast. You have six stacks on the Ginsu's from Kogma. any fight that they choose to take, and it does look like Jinx is just going to try and get that mid lane turret as quickly as possible and then get out. There's a rotation, though, from 13 Noobs Academy. They're trying to get in. There's a Tom Kench ultimate. Oh. He gets interrupted because he's followed more by the Poppy. Flame Chomper's going to slow things down, but Tom Kench still walks around it. He's looking to get a little bit more damage. The Dwani is Capitai. here. The Mountain Drake was coming up, but the kick from Capitai to set themselves up, take down the Tom Kench, and now can chase in slow. to justify as well. Nuez gets a nice Nuez. Arctic Rush to push the Lee Sin backwards. The chase you is still hit. on. Sonic Wave lasts. Will he go with the Resonating Strike? It's Lee Syndrome. He hops away, though, as the Urgot is there. They decide not to go forward any further but it is 14 kills to four and 13 noobs academy are smurfing at the moment yeah and that's going to be another drake as well oriana gonna try and trade for the top lane tower but doesn't see poppy coming in she will die to this there's no way she can actually kill this poppy We'll see as Jay the Daddy gonna get to run away. taken down. Shockwave pulls the poppy backwards. Squashy gonna still just keep walking forward, okay. decides not to chase it down. You don't have to die if you're just straight up running away. And Poppy says, eh, farm's a little bit more worthwhile as I'm sitting about 20 farm over this Urgot. But that is the ultimate committed from Oriana. That's one of those game changing ultimates. If you hit four or five members with it in a team fight, no matter how far you are behind, it was the, the famous play from the Rocks Tigers versus SKT series where Faker just lands this enormous four-man shockwave and wipes Rocks Tigers in the, one of the final matches that determines the series. So, Oriana, always a champion that has the potential to turn games around, but having that ultimate committed in something as stupid as trying to get the, the top, tier, uh, top tier one, I mean, this that's... I was gonna know this is actually something amazing to look at check out Oriana's farm 252 she's out farmed everyone else on the map even the cog mob by 20 farm so you're talking about late game pop opportunities if Lulu isn't around to save cog Ma, Nova could go down to Oriana one massive combo because that cog Ma doesn't have that much health and Oriana is going to hurt as you got a little bit of a siege coming into the mid lane 13 Noobs Academy are currently 1-4. They've got Orion on the top side. They're four members in that mid lane for Why Are You Running? Having a bit of trouble. They've got to take down this cannon minion. It's just continuing to pop away on that mid-tier turret. They drop it, but another one's coming right on in. 
Yeah, and the thing is, is uh, Nova. Hold oh. on, Mike. Get down. Shockwave, I think, didn't do that much as Nova is going to be hit by the Urgot. He's down. They've got the fear of the Morgana as well. But her, she's going to go gold. Staying alive for the moment. Regen Pride getting ticked down bit by bit, but he's not dead yet. And this is the fight. The why are you running need? The Poppy is still alive. It's currently a 3v3. The Tom Kench here, but Oriana, the only real carry left alive. Kappa going to miss his Q with Lance onto a minion. So Poppy goes, and she's got the knock about it too. Dr. Monocle should be dropped after eating up the Urgot, trying to keep him alive. But he's been whimsied by the Lulu. He's still gonna be able to finish off Squashy before going down himself. Daddy G Link, he's actually made the play. He's got the shield. They get the ace. Are you kidding me? Why are you running with a crazy play in the mid lane? Keep the Ergot Oriana alive and ace 13 Noobs Academy. Yeah, why are you. The, are you kidding me is right, Jake. But the question for me isn't necessarily the play, but why on earth did they go under the tower? They. A little drunk for blood at the moment, and 13 Noobs Academy need to be very careful if they're going to continue pressing their lead. Um, the early game fight, they should have just le left it at that, and at the two for two, regroup, reorient, and spend their gold. But no, they go in trying to greed for the ace and the inhibitor and end up getting wiped underneath the tower. And they were fighting That's... without the Cog Maw, which you do not want to do when he's your main carry. I know that Lee Sin's got a lot of kills on him, but he's not going to be 1v5ing late game. It's that Cog Maw who had a beautiful, beautiful pick between Regen Pride and the Orianna, able to grab that Cog Maw early. It was, I believe, shot wave into Urgot's ultimate to take out that Kog'Maw at the very beginning of the fight and then as the fight progressed you said it they got a little bit of extra bloody went in lost because of it now they're gonna try to chase in onto the Morgana hold on Lee Sin's here as well he's got a GA let's see if they can pop it Shockwave gonna drop him low there it is the GA has been popped Nuez around the corner tanking up the Poppy and the Morgana the ultimate from Poppy will not save the Lee Sin he's gonna go down they're chasing in they've got the stun onto Exiled in the meantime Lulu and Kog'Maw are in the bottom lane they've been able to secure one turret. Nuez will drop as Squashy flashes forward to make sure the last auto goes down. Urgot's trying to defend the bottom lane turret as Squashy is dropping lower and lower. Tom Kench over to the side. The flash forward in the bottom lane from Kogba takes down the Urgot, but the rest of the fight is going terribly for this side of 13 Noobs Academy. But at the moment, it's really kind of delaying because Kogba has been able to secure not only a turret, but the inhibitor as well. Huba Huba and Nova are destroying Why Are You Running's base. They should back away after this, though, as the recalls are coming through from Why Are You Running. They're leaving the Jinx, though, to try to take down the mid lane second tier turret. Dr. Markle is going to stick around as well, so they will get at least one turret traded back after being able to pick up two kills. But they lose the Urgot, lose the inhibitor turret, and an inhibitor in the bottom lane. Yeah, they lost two turrets on that bot side as well as an inhibitor. That's a pretty massive deal with Baron coming up in 30 seconds. They're going to have to commit somebody to the bot side and just to deal with the super minions, and that is when 13 noobs can strike at the Baron, but they are clearing out the vision here. Why are you running very good discipline to clear out oh. vision at this point? They're actually the gonna try to rush Baron as soon as it spawns. It's up, they're gonna immediately start it. The second Mountain Drake is gonna go over to 13 Noobs Academy. They have five Drakes to their name, which is insane. But they've got the Jinx. They're gonna immediately start onto the Baron. The TP coming in for the Urgot in the bottom lane. They should be able to secure this Baron. Bobby's gonna be TPing in. Can they but get there in time for 13 fight. Noobs Academy? I think they're gonna be Bobby able to secure in. it. So why are you running? Have been able to secure the Baron. Now they have to get out they're alive. Squashy got knocking up three members. However, in the back line, Morgana's been sent up by the Who Sejuani. Is? She's been able to help the Shockwave land. Kog'Maw's able to take down one member. The Sejuani being finished off. And now the rest of the members of 13 Noobs Academy trying to do what they can and succeeding at being able to take members one bit by bit. Living Artillery still coming in, dropping the Oriana low. She's got no mana. They cannot defend this. That's the Lee Sin going in, securing the Jinx. He's going to go down to the Oriana. It was just a couple of auto attacks. Nova does not chase in. They get their second tier turn on the top side and they can keep pushing in. Their super, super minions pouring the into the base on the bottom looking for the first nexus turret j daddy has to defend the nexus turrets nova and the morgana might be looking to actually end the game right now yeah and they had this the super minions to at least take down one maybe both nexus turrets but nova takes a big oh shot. he's gone it he's gone the, the nexus turret also actually lives for the moment the flash forward for j daddy he's got the double kill as well and the nexus turret lives for the side of why are you running this is a quarterfinals game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the beginning of the tournament, and we have a game balancing on a razor edge. Five drakes, seven kills, 
3,000 gold difference between these two teams. Speaking of five Drakes, what's going to be coming up next? The Elder Drake with a five Drake buff, double Infernal. That has to be a priority for both teams right now. If 13 noobs get their hand on it, it's basically GG. They, I mean, what's that going to be? 27% something like that bonus damage on top of the extra burn from the five drakes I don't think that any team no matter how tanky can quite stand against that much less the Exodia buff Which is the second one coming through Nova right. is up and I think the fight's coming They're looking for the inhibitor in the mid lane. They got the turret. They'll see if they want to they're backing away They don't want the inhibitor just yet because 13 is chasing forward squashy trying to do it again He's gonna side. dash right in three members knocked up as well knocked back a little bit shockwave Wait, member on two members Lulu's low hubba hubba also has to go away Nua's trying to jump in will drop before she's able to get much of anything however that shockwave is pushing the Kogma and the Lulu out of the fight. Nova and Huba cannot fight. Nova and Hubba, not Huba, excuse me. Hubba cannot fight, so they have left the battlefield. Justify still here in the mid lane. Kogma trying to heal up off the red buff. Yep, and he does manage to do that. They also have access to the regen from Ocean Drake. So, that in prolonged fights, that can actually be an incredible benefit especially in a siege situation which something tells me this this game is going to devolve into fairly soon one minute and 54 seconds left on the elder drake when it is going to spawn and i believe we will see a pretty big fight surrounding that well, they definitely have to fight for it because you cannot give 13 Noobs Academy a free Elder Drake as we talked about earlier. They're just going to be doing way too much, but keep your eyes on this Orianna. 5, 2, and 9. Four completed items, a massive amount of spell penetration. She's hurting people every time she tosses out that command attack. Urgot was splitting in that bottom lane, just keeping those super minions from shoving down the wave. And he's actually gotten 30 farm ahead of this poppy. I want to see how much gold he's sitting. Only 400, so he did recently back. He's going to be joining his team, walking up here as his teleport is down, because they've got a five-man defend this top lane. Yep. They don't really have the capability of shoving in without Baron 13 losing that last baron really hurt their ability to close out the game um just the amount of wave clear coming through from the oriana and the jinx i mean that wave's never going to hit tower if they're playing unless they force a fight which they really to be honest probably shouldn't do under at least under oh, tower, they trying to force time. a fight that's forward, okay, and that's going to be immediately disengaged by the side of why are you running really good. They've struggled to be able to do that so far. Urgot cleared the bottom wave, and they have the inhibitor back up. So if there's a time for why are you running to fight, this is the time. They're starting to get a small amount of leads here and there. With that wave kind of quelled in the bottom lane, there is no inhibitors down. The side of 13 Noobs Academy leave the top lane. They're looking for the Elder that is spawning in 15 seconds. Yep, and that's exactly what I was expecting them to do. They're leaving Urgot on the top side, though, so this is going to be a 4v5. They, the problem is they don't have vision set up in this area. It's a big laxity that they should have been on this side half a minute ago, dropping down wards so that they know where their opponents are coming from. They have a couple of control wards, so they know that they have vision. But... Battle lines have been drawn, and a shot has been landed. Oh, Squashy going to have to run away as a little bit of initiation didn't quite lead to the team following up immediately afterwards, but that's fine for the Poppy. She's so darn tanky. It's really all about can they find these key targets. The Orianna needs to land that shockwave onto Nova, or the fight is over. Jinx has to stay alive. And for the side of 13 Noobs Academy, look at the dance. The dance just continues. And for the side of 13 Noobs Academy, they know they can do it because they got a top wave pushing in their favor as well as the bottom wave. Oriana's Oriana in the mid lane. started walking towards the mid to try to shove that out and threaten the inhibitor, her. but the Velder's going down. It's going to be secured by the Lee Sin. 13 Noobs Academy get it, and that's the call. The charge forward. That Squash is going to knock up two members. Nuance is going to be dropped low. Dr. Monaco is going to be finished off. They are able to save the Jinx for the moment. Dr. Monaco spits Justify out, but she's had a sliver of health, and nobody is touching the Cog Ma. Who Who's taken down the Tom Kent to flash forward from Hubba Hubba to take out the Jinx as well. Regen Pride has a lot of damage though, so he'll get at least one back with that Lulu. But that is small pickings in the face of nearly an ace. Make it a 3-4-1. Yep. And it's going to be straight onto the Baron here. No fear, no jungler up, and this thing just melts. Oh, Elder man. Dragon plus... 
the double mountain drake just too strong and it's going to melt that baron in just a couple of auto attacks i think early wow. game uh blue and red buffs take longer to kill than that baron just did <laughs> it was yeah. gone yeah it just evaporated and now baroned up elder dragon they're gonna walk it down mid lane hopefully i think or walk it into the Bot side jungle for some reason. Why do you need blue buffs? Lee Sin's got to have that blue buff for the cooldown resets. You know, it's all about being able to get as many kicks as possible during a fight. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, sure. well, anyway, so now they're going bot lane for some reason. I would expect them to put Poppy on the bot side and then go four man mid. That's the proper call here, but I suppose they're just trying for an end. They're going to go they for four really... members in the bottom lane, Poppy solo in the mid, because mm. they know that's an open inhibitor on the bottom side. There's no six-man turret to defend the side of I don't why are you like running. That. I don't like that at all. You have the long range from the Kog'Maw that would allow you to poke down the turret and also defend your, uh, your siege minion versus the Poppy, who really can't do that much to the Orianna and prevent the wave clear, so they... A little bit of a macro mistake right there, but they are going Nuez. to get down. They immediately chunked down to half Nova. Nova is tearing through everyone. He's taking down the inhibitor. The shockwave going to pick off Lee Sin, but they can't that's catch a huge the Kog'Maw. Deal. That shockwave being down might spell the end of the game as the Kog'Maw is going to step forward, finish off the inhibitor. Turret in the mid lane as well as the inhibitor. Two inhibitors down. Why are you running left with the scraps of their base? Nova's going to take his health chunk down to half with an attack command, but imagine if there was a shockwave available, it would have been gone. In the meantime, Regen Pride stepping forward. He's gotten tanky, over 4,000 health, seeing if he can defend and be the turret for his team. 5v5, the fight Squashy starts with Bobby jumping forward. The new is trying to flash in. He's got the stun under the Kog'Maw, well, but the Kog'Maw's in wild growth. Can anyone shut down Nova? No, they cannot. He's destroying everyone, clearing them up bit by bit. Wave clear for himself, and that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the end. End of the game as a near ace for 13 Noobs Academy closes out the game. But beautiful, beautiful plays by both teams, honestly. There was an opportunity for why are you running to come back in that game. They did eventually lose, but man, it was a good game all the way through. Wow. Okay. That was a real... Considering how the early game went... I wasn't expecting such an exciting finale, but the Baron take the great... I mean, you have to admit that they were a little bit reticent to go in considering they had both Baron and Elder. They probably could have forced a little bit harder if they wanted to, but that was a pleasure to watch toward the end, and it does end up going to 13 Noobs Gaming, but why are you running giving them a great run for their money? Are we doing MVPs and honorable mentions or not? Um, let's just give a, a MVP for each team. How about that? We're not okay. actually recording them long term because it is a tournament setting, but we do want to give credit to the people that played the best for both teams. So let's give an MVP to each team. MVP, Capitai for the winning side. The advantages he gained for himself and for his team through ganks as well as small skirmishes is really what set the snowball running. His control and his shot calling to pick up both of the major drakes, um, the infernals, as well as the, the clutch smites, especially the one surrounding the elder drake. That is definitely earns him the MVP just right there. Um, as for the opposing side, uh, J Daddy Me Link on the Oriana deserving of that MVP. The shockwaves onto the back line in a couple of scenarios are the only thing that prevented that game from just spiraling out of control. My the amount soldiers of farm that, march that guy on. managed to stack up. 343 farm, 16,000 gold, matching almost everybody except for, of course, Nova, who had 19,000 gold, but most on his team and the second most in the game just off of the amount of farm he was uh, able to accrue. And the damage he could put through in that late game onto the back line really kind of turned fights and almost ended up winning the game. 
All right, we're gonna take a quick break and be back with the first of the semifinals. We are casting both, so you will see 13 Noobs Academy returning in just a little bit. We'll get you the details in a moment, but either way, we're gonna take a quick break and be right back. And as Dash would say, don't touch that browser.